Um, I am a little confused because Mr. Pritam Singh says, let's continue the debate. Ms. Sylvia Lim pointed out that it was premature. I would like to clarify with Ms. Sylvia Lim whether she meant that this matter is sub judice and therefore we should not be discussing this. Ms. Sylvia Lim. So I did not use the word sub judice. That was not my principal objection. Mm -hmm. My objection is that the judgment is being appealed to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal may reverse the findings or review and vary the findings of the High Court. So it is premature for the DPM to file this motion to call upon the House to do anything when the findings are subject to review. That is my objection. DPM. Well, I thank Ms. Lim for her clarification. That I, you confirm that this matter is not sub judice, right? In your, view. In your view. Do you confirm that, that this matter is not sub judice? In your view. So my objection is based on the procedures that are available for parties to appeal. I have not taken a position on sub judice. It all depends on how the debate turns. Well, I want to remind the members of this House when, that, when I spoke about the motion, I said this motion is about what is to be expected of members of Parliament, integrity, honesty and being truthful in Parliament. So can I ask Ms Lim, is this a proper subject for debate in this House? If you wish to reply, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I thought I made myself quite clear uh, in my speech, which was focused on the fact that because the High Court judgment is going to be appealed and the findings in that sense have not been finally decided, it is premature to call upon the House uh, in the terms of the motion. So the, the operative clause, of course, is, is the last one where it, it calls upon AHDC to take certain actions. And that, that is the operative clause, and I'm just saying it's premature. DPM. Chairman, I think. Yeah. Well, you mentioned about what is interim. So let me repeat myself. Huh? I said this motion is about what is expected of members of parliament, integrity, honesty, and being truthful in parliament. Now, this House needs to agree on the principles that all members of parliament must adhere to and the standards of probity required of all MPs in dealing with public funds. And there are serious issues of probity, accountability, and the handling of public funds that must be addressed now, even while the appeal is being dealt with. There is a judgment of the High Court which stands until the appeal is heard. The question is, what should be done, what should happen between now and the time when the appeal is decided. And that could be some time yet. So in the interim, <clears throat> my question is, should the Workers' Party town councillors who have been found to have acted dishonestly and have been found <clears throat> to be in breach of their duties, whose conduct was found to be egregious, should they continue to have access to and control public funds? Yeah. So, members will know that when there are similar findings are made in any corporate setting, it's only right and proper that those whose integrity has been impunged to step aside and recuse themselves until they clear their names. So, I, will, I welcome the efforts of the Workers' Party MPs to clear their names, but until they do so, they have to be accountable to this House for the findings that the High Court has made. And that must be doubly so when you are dealing with millions of dollars of public funds. So I'd like to ask the Town Council Chairman, what is your view on this matter? That you are the Chairman of the Town Council, you have to decide. 